Did we overhype MCP? MCP was launched a year ago and it was heralded as the new standard protocol for how AI agents and large language models interact with external systems. The hype was insane, but if you're someone who's been using MCP in production level AI systems since then, you understand it has a lot of limitations. And this week, Anthropic released an article talking about those limitations, namely the extreme heavy token load MCP servers have on AI agent systems to the point where they start to break down. And in this video, we are gonna dive into that article by Anthropic so you can understand what these token limitations really are, how you can fix them, and what it means for you, an actual AI practitioner, moving forward if you still wanna use MCP. So this is the article I alluded to. It's called Code Execution with MCP. It was published on the 4th, and I'll put a link to it down below so you can follow along. Now, this article talks about two things in particular. One, the issues with MCP, namely token bloat when we have multiple MCP servers attached to one agent. The second thing it talks about is what we can actually do about it, which, hint, has to do with code execution. Now, as a very brief reminder, what is MCP? Well, first of all, it stands for Model Context Protocol, and it's essentially a way for large language models and AI agents to deal with external systems. Normally, we do that with API calls. What you see here is both a traditional AI agent in the green and an MCP agent in the red. They are both focused on using Firecrawl. Firecrawl is a web app. It's a tool that lets us scrape the internet. And in this case, there are five Firecrawl tools, right? We have the ability to map websites, scrape websites, crawl websites, extract websites, and get the status, right? Firecrawl, five tools. Traditionally, I would attach these to my AI agent as individual tools, right? We have all five here, and I would have a description inside the system prompt saying, this is what each tool does, right? The problem is A, I have to manually connect every single tool, and then B, inside of each tool, and they're mirrored down here, I need to go inside there and I need to set up everything, right? I need to set up the schema, I need to set up the API key, I need to set up the description. There's like a ton of manual work required to set up each tool. Now compare that to MCP. Instead of having five tools right here and I have to understand how each of them works exactly, I instead just have a list tools and an execute tools option, right? This means that all the fire crawl tools are listed here in the list tools option. Using MCP, my AI agent can now just go to the list tools server and say, hey, I want to use fire crawl. I've come to the fire crawl service. You tell me all the tools you have available and you tell me exactly how to use them. I as the user don't even need to know how that works. I don't need to set up anything. I'm just telling him to get all that information from MCP. And once it has all these tool descriptions and schemas at its disposal, it can then use execute tools to execute said tool. Again, this makes it way simpler for you, the end user, to use complicated tools like this, right? Before you really need to understand how each and every one of them functions, set it all up, now, connect it to the MCP server and let your agent go forth and conquer, right? That's what MCP really buys you as the end practitioner of these agents. So back to this article, what exactly is the problem again? I kind of understand MCP. We're talking about excessive token usage. How excessive? Don't we have great, huge context windows, sometimes a million tokens large if I'm using something like Gemini? Well, the answer is yes, but not exactly. So here I am inside of Claude code, and this is where I wanna demonstrate sort of this token bloat idea. So right now I have my AI agent that has three MCP servers attached to it. It has an N8N MCP server that you've seen me use in previous videos. It has a Playwright MCP server, which uses for browser automation. And then we have GitHub MCP, only three MCP servers, okay? And we're using Sonnet 4.5, which has a token, a context window of 200,000 tokens. Okay, we have not done anything with this AI agent yet. It has, we haven't given it a conversation. We haven't told it to do jack. Yet, if I bring up the context window right here, what do we see? We see that without us having done a single thing, we have already used 66% of our context window. And of that 66%, half of that is coming from MCP tools. That's a problem. First of all, why is the MCP tools taking up so much space. Well, if you look here, you see how I scroll down? These are all the tools associated with those MCP servers. Remember the Firecrawl one I showed you how it was five? Well, <laughs> these MCP servers have way more than five tools and each of those have a certain amount of tokens associated with them. You put that all together and a third of our context window has already been eaten up 
just by essentially laying out all these MCP servers and their tools for the agent. And now you're probably saying, okay, sure, two thirds of the context window has been eaten up. I still got a third left. We're good, right? Mm, not exactly. There has been a number of studies done on what is called context rot. Context rot essentially means that your first 10,000 tokens are not the same as your last 10,000 tokens. Namely, those first 10,000 tokens work way better than the last 10,000. That also applies for the first 20 and the last 20, the first 100,000 and the last 100,000. The more context window, the more of that window that's eaten up, the less effective these AI agents tend to be. Now, there's no specific number at which, hey, every time at 100,000 tokens, we fall off a cliff. It depends, A, on the model, and B, what we are having the model do. If it's rather complex tasks that we are giving it, it tends to fall off even quicker. All that to say is, hey, we're kind of behind the eight ball, and we haven't even started because of this MCP bloat, right? A third of our window is already gone. And why exactly is that happening? Well, it's because how MCP tools actually work. As stated here, most MCP clients load all tool definitions up front directly into the context, exposing them to the model using a direct tool calling syntax. That is exactly what you saw here, right? See all these tools, see all those tokens. It's all getting loaded up front, even if we don't use 99% of them. And so that's the problem with MCP. We can't effectively use multiple MCP servers within one AI agent, right? It just overloads the LLM. And if you want an even deeper illustration of that, they have a really cool graphic here inside the article itself showing how these tools and tool lists keep getting bounced around the system every time we're having to do anything. So that brings us to point two, which is what the heck can we actually do about this, right? If I can't use MCP as I normally would, what are my options? So I just throw my hands up in the air and give up on MCP entirely? No. So what Anthropic suggests, and we should listen to Anthropic, because remember they essentially invented MCP, and that is to present MCP servers as code APIs rather than direct tool calls. They tell us that the agent can actually write code to interact with the MCP servers. This means the agent can just load the tools they need when they need them, right? It doesn't always need all the information about every tool available at all times, which causes that token bloat. Anthropic goes on to tell us that there's a number of ways to do this. Mainly, we can use some sort of file tree structure or use something like Claude skills. Now, this can be kind of confusing. So let's talk about like what this actually means for you. So like I said, Anthropic suggests doing sort of a file tree system. The kind of analogy I like to use is essentially like a normal MCP server, the way we're normally doing it, is imagine traditionally for MCP, we're giving the AI agent this giant dictionary. And inside of that dictionary is what you see here every single tool, all the description, all the schema. And obviously that is a ton of read. That's a ton of tokens, but we give it to our agent. And we say, Hey, never let go of that dictionary. You're going to look at that dictionary. Anytime you do something. Anthropic suggests we then take that dictionary, right? We chop it up into a thousand different books, each corresponding to a specific tool. And we go put it next door and we create this library. Now this is where the file system comes in and you can see it kind of visually depicted here right right at the top of the screen that file system is essentially a map for the ai system saying hey if you need something here's what's in the library next door here's where you can find the stuff go there and get what you need when you need it i don't always need you to hold on to every single book and just have that take up your context window just don't do that at all just get what you need when you need it and in fact according to the article this brings down the token usage by like 99 percent right so this essentially solves the issue of the token bloat while we are still able to actually use all the MCP features. And you can see them talking about that here, right? The agent discovers tools by exploring the file system. You list the available servers, right? This reduces the token usage from 150,000 tokens to 2,000 tokens. And here inside of my file system, you can see here on the left, MCP file system, the servers, you have GitHub, N8N, Playwright, and it even has like an example usage file right here for the agent to look at and understand what it needs to do, right? And once it finds the tool it needs, it can then execute it and write code on the fly based on those scripts. And again, if all of that was super confusing, just understand we now are transitioning to a use tools when you need them approach versus the traditional MCP approach, which is you have everything all the time, right? It just, it's too heavy. And if you doubt Anthropic, Cloudflare themselves published similar findings. You can find the link here, and they essentially have the same exact idea. Now, Anthropic goes on to talk about the benefits of this code execution style and essentially is, hey, AI is really good at executing code and writing code. Why don't we just lean on that? 
And from there, they go on for another few paragraphs, basically showing different examples of what this would look like in the real world. And they even then reference Claude's skills, which is a great way to kind of bring in this sort of scripting into something like Claude code. Now, what does this actually mean? And I think Anthropic, again, does a great job here of kind of talking about like the pros and cons, okay? Because if we go back to this, right, this agent right here, this singular MCP, Firecrawl MCP agent, is this going to suffer from bloat? Is this going to suffer from context rot? Probably not. A, because it has a very small amount of tools, but even if you quadruple these tools, it's still just one MCP server. And the reality is if you're using an AI system with one, maybe two MCP servers, even if they are heavy, you can get away with that. We saw tons of videos I've done in the past using the N8N MCP server to great effect. We had no issues there. But if you want to create an AI system that uses multiple MCPs, right, and has an extreme amount of potential tools at its disposal, this traditional system that everyone has been using in the past will not cut it, right? This, it's just like you saw here, this was just three MCP servers and a third of our context window is gone. And again, we're always fighting against the invisible context rot, which is also really, really hard to quantify. Like I said, there's no exact token number where it's like, oh, it's starting to suck. You just don't know, right? It's extremely variable. And so you don't want to be operating in these gray areas for too long. But this code execution system does introduce complexity and that can't just be hand waved away, right? We are having it write code. We are having it execute code. We're doing extra steps to send it to that room next door to check, take a look at the library, right? All that introduces complexity. All that introduces another link in the chain that can be broken and have things go wrong. So you as the user have choices to make. How complex do you want your system to be? How many MCP servers do you really need? And based on those answers, that will dictate whether you continue to use MCP like we've normally used, or if you need to start using some sort of file system and doing the code execution as shown in the article. So in summary, is MCP dead? No, definitely not. But is MCP the silver bullet? It kind of was, you know, hyped up to be in certain circles. Also no, right? Just like any tool, you need to know what you're actually trying to accomplish and like what your restraints are. How flexible can you be? How many MCP servers do you really need, right? You just need to approach things intelligently, right? You can't just blindly use MCP in a certain context every single time anymore. So hopefully this video helped um, kind of explain this article for you. Watch out for more videos coming out with like Claude skills where we kind of show how exactly this really would work in, an, in a real life example. Um, and as always, check out all the free resources in my school down below, and I'll see you guys around.